Hi, welcome to another Flood of Flow tutorial. So as you begin to use your application, you'll figure that you need so many things. Apart from the fact that you can update database, you can use database, you can create read and write. There are some times when you don't feel like updating database, reading of the reading those database, you just want to send messages to your user. I remember the, the Champions League, the Man City versus Inter Milan game just passed. I think it was over the weekend. And when I checked my banking application, I saw this pop-up telling me to subscribe to a plan, to subscribe to a bouquet, or I mean, you know, satellite TV bouquet so I can watch the match. I'm pretty sure sometimes you want to do something like that without even touching your application. You want to send notifications to your user. Probably there's a new update, there's a new alert. You want to tell them to make an update. You want to just tell them all that stuff. It's super cool. You can do so with Firebase without breaking a sweat. I'm telling you, you can do so with Firebase without breaking a sweat. Don't forget, if you're watching this channel for the very first time, you should subscribe if you're getting value from this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up too. So how do you do that? You do that by going to the engage, you know, you barely use this, right? The engage part of your application. Click on messaging. Yeah, just click on messaging right there. And you will see two type of messaging. That's what that's what it will give you. But first, let's just go ahead and, you know, create our messaging. So you see two type. One of them is the Firebase notification message. And the other one is the in-app messages. So notification is that particular one that comes like a test message, right? You will just hear like, bing. There's a test message right there, but in-app message, it goes into the application, displays on top of the application, and users will be able to receive this message inside the application. And you know what's good? You can even redirect them to a particular screen when they click this, this application, when they click that message. When they click the message, you can redirect them to another screen just saying, hey, uh, there's a new release of our application, please go to the Play Store. So they can click on it and go all the way to the Play Store to go download the new application. Or maybe there's a new promo and you want them to apply it, you could tell them, they could apply it. Super straightforward. So how do you do this? You click on Firebase in-app messages. For, for notification, for notification, you can always do that on Flutterflow if you're using Flutterflow or if you're using a dialog, you can do that in application if you want to. But for the Firebase in-app messages, you can do it in Flutterflow. The only way you can do it is if you write a custom function that would trigger Firebase in-app messages directly from Flutterflow. But right off the bat, Flutterflow doesn't offer that as at, the moment, as at this moment of recording this video. So we're going to say create. And you can see it's asking you, how do you want it? Do you want it to be a card? Do you want it to be a model? Do you want it to be an image only? Do you want it to be a top banner? So mostly you would want it to be at the middle, like a card. That's where you want it to be. You want it to be a card, something at the middle of the, of the screen. And then you choose your color. Make sure that your color is your brand color anyway. You know, make sure it's your brand color and it's not just any color of your choice. And then you're adding a message to it. So maybe your message is new promotion. Yeah, and then you're, adding, you're saying like, you're adding like maybe get 5% off this holiday. You know, something like that. And then you're adding images to it. So the image is going to be from you, yeah. The image is going to be from you or you can choose an image that you've uploaded before. Yeah, so you're going to, you have to upload an, a, a fairly... A square image for your portrait and then for your landscape you will have to upload a fairly straight image for your landscape application so it's just the way it is like so so I'm gonna pull this in there say save and once you say save you should be able to go to the next screen and then you select a target so let's go why is this not why is this not working okay yeah let's use the same as the portrait primary button get discount so primary button get discount so what action do you want them to take then you would just go copy you will go back to your application or you go back to flutterflow and then you will copy the you you will copy the screen the link to the particular screen you want them to go to and then you'll be able to take it you'll be able to lead them to that particular page that's the way you would do it 
you will just go to your Flutterflow account. When you get to your Flutterflow account, you would see, copy the link to this page. It's an action on Flutterflow. I don't want to bore you because I think it's something you know. You would say, copy the link to this page. You copy it and you come paste it here so that users will go to this page. Immediately, they click on the action. And meanwhile, you can just allow them to dismiss it when they click on it. You can allow them to dismiss it when they click on it. It's fine either way. You can add more buttons. You can add another button, two buttons, three buttons if you want to. And then next, you click on next. It asks you what's going to be the campaign name. So you say new campaign. New campaign. And then, um, then you can have like, what's the description? Which of the app is it going to be the Android and the iOS app? So it can be for the Android. It could be for the iOS app if you want to. <clears throat> and then you can schedule it for now or you can schedule it for tomorrow if you want to. And then you say next. And once you say next, you would, uh, once you say next, you can save, you can re review, and then you can basically send it. That's how, that's how you will, um, that's how you would do it. Save it, but right here I would have to put enable my Google Analytics for me to be able to do this. But it's as easy as this. So once you review, it pops also out the button and tell you send, and off you go. You are able to send it. So the reason why I can't really use the other account that's always oh, that's already have already enabled Google Analytics is because of um, privacy issues. It's an app that I'm currently working on, and you can't really see it. But really, that's the way you would fix in-app messaging and once you're okay with this you, you click on send it broadcasts to all the phones every other thing you know it broadcasts to all the phones and the good thing is that one thing that you can do is that you can always target you can localize the target you, yeah you can localize the target you can add more languages so if your app is if your app is um it's available to like maybe french people people who speak different languages you can you can localize it yeah you can localize it and you can change you can translate it that's something that you can do you can send it to different type of people ios is it ios or is it android so these are things that you can do when you are creating in-app messaging so i hope this works for you go ahead and try it out tell me what you think in the comment section and also you want to get ahead with learning flow flow click on the link below to get started with learning flow flow and also there are other useful links that you can use below i'll see you in another tutorial where i get to show you another tip or another trick i'll see you then